All right, during the break, I did something I don't like to do, and that is I tried to totally recreate this program and write it from almost from scratch during the break. Probably not the best idea in the world. But what I wanted to show you was something that's almost totally modularized. All right. So now if you take a look inside of here, we've got our main that calls process employee records. And look at what process employee records does. It calls other routines. All right. So the first name is in set first name, which you can see is very small. Last name, hours, rate, and then the gross. Now, one thing that's not in here is I took out all of the error checking. I'm definitely not that good that I could put that back in and get that to work in 10 minutes. All right, so all the error checking would have to be put back in. In other words, if you had minimums and maximum for hours worked and hourly rate, et cetera, you'd have to put all that stuff back in. All right, and I think I, you know, I heard somebody talking during the, during the break and not put, putting them uh, on notice or anything. I think it was Skylar, I think that you said that is something along the line is, okay, what is this exactly buying you? All right, maybe you're talking about something else. Yeah. I don't know. But imagine for just a second, because this is a simple example. When I say simple, it's got 134 lines in it. If this was a true, real program, payroll program, would you agree it would conceivably have thousands of lines in it? You'd have to figure out FICA and stay, everything. So what happens is when you start to modularize and you start to write code like this is each one of these routines can now be written by a different person. All right? And you still have to coordinate and somebody has to put everything together. But that's how a lot of programming is done, especially in big shops. I think I mentioned to you when I worked for AT&T, I was probably responsible for about 10,000 lines of code. And you might say, well, that's a lot. No, the project we worked, were working on had over 5 million. So I had just a very little piece, all right? We, that was always the joke, when you're just a fly on the windshield. No, we were, the, we were the, the poop that comes out of the fly on the windshield. We weren't even up to that status, all right? But that's how it is in a lot of bigger shops. Now, if you're working and you're the only employee in a place, you may not write it like this. You may write it more the first way. That doesn't mean that it's better. It's not. But the idea, again, is if you can, you can look at what's in blue here. If I have a problem with a gross, so for some reason my gross is coming out and I know it's wrong, now I know that it's got to be in this section that's right here. It has to be in there. So in other words, I've segregated away all of the first name, last name, hours, and rate. I don't have to worry about that anymore as long as I know that's working correctly. Again, I'd have to come back in here, and when we're doing this, I'd have to check. If I had something, I think we pulled it all out. But if I had minimum and maximum hours, et cetera, I'd have to put all that stuff back in, all right? But it's not even inconceivable then that if I'm doing something, let's just assume for the gross, it gets really complicated. That might even be broken down into more than one method, all right? There's no right and wrong way of doing this. I guess the only wrong way is if you get the wrong answers, all right? But there are, you know, and, and again, I've said this to people before, and they think I'm trying to be funny. I'm not. There are, at least at any job I've ever worked at where I've been a programmer, I've never had a boss who hung over my shoulder and said, why'd you do it like that? Why didn't you write more methods? You know, they don't care. They care about results, and does it work? But your peers, if you're working with fellow programmers, and you do things in an unorthodox way or in a way that's not standard based on the company you work They'll let you know. All right. There, typically, there will be some kind of a protocol. But again, what we did was we took an, a routine, I should, I'm sorry, a program that had one method in it called main and broke it up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine different methods. All right? And still, so now, you know, do the math. And, and forget about the comments at the beginning, all the stuff at the beginning of the program. All right? With 135 lines divided by nine, that gives you about, about approximately 15 lines per routine. In an ideal world, when you set this up, regardless of your screen size, you should be able to see an entire routine on a screen, an entire method. And if you're doing that, you're doing a really good job. Now, notice, I mean, I did this, and I did that for your benefit, not for mine, because it would be very hard to read otherwise because it would go off the screen. But most of these things, especially a lot of them, I mean, they're that small. They're easier to debug because they're small. They're concentrated. This is writing modular code. This is the way that eventually you should be doing it in every programming language. I don't care if it's C sharp. I don't care if it's this language. I don't care what it is. That's the way that you are supposed to write code. A couple other things I just wanted to mention from this. If you look in here, I took this this decimal formatter, and I made it global to the program because I did a bunch of different routines where I formatted stuff with dollars and cents. So I defined it outside of anything else. I also did the same thing with a tote gross. It's not that that was mandatory to do that. It's just the way I did it. All right. Now, one, one thing you may or may not have noticed, okay, is when you look in here, boy, it's like, if I go and double click on the word static and I start looking around, I'm going to find it all over the place in here. All right? It, because it's all over the place in here. And the reason for that is all of the stuff that's in here is now directly tethered to main. When we get to, it's either, I think it's chapter six, the next chapter, what you're going to see for the first time is we're going to have two different files for each program we write. We will have one file that will have just main in it. And we'll have another file that has all of our logic in it. Then all these statics that you see here, they'll all go away. But because of the way it's written right now, we still need the word static all over the place. And you may or may not have noticed, maybe you've seen this yourself, but if I leave it off, all right, sooner or later, something's going to be underlined here. I'm going to get an error message. In there. Of course I wouldn't. But I'll get an error message someplace. And it'll tell me that it should be static. So again, you know, you might have your own thoughts as to whether or not this is a better program or it's not a better program. But it is a modularized program. All right. And that's what I was trying to get across to you. All right. Let me uh, go off a little bit and just... <clears throat> Go back to the book here for a second. Just so you see this. Yeah. Am I in the wrong chapter? No, I don't want the next chapter. I want this one. Okay. What we're going to do next time what I'm going to ask you to do, and you can start on it now if you want to, but you don't have to. You're going to get an hour to work on it next time. And again, you're not turning this in. I'm going to ask you to do this one right here. It's the hardest program you've done thus far. Number eight on page 314, this conversion program. You won't have to turn it in. But I'll give you about an hour to work on it, and then I'll go over it and do it right before your very eyes. All right? And, um, but for... Next week, you're going to actually end up doing three programs for your next assignment. The first two are right here, and you can do them as one program or as two programs. It's a prime number type of program. Hopefully you know what a prime number is. It's only divisible by itself and one. So you'll end up writing a method called is prime which takes an integer and returns true if the number is prime and false if it's not. Then you'll use that inside of a loop to figure out the prime numbers between 1 and 100, and you'll write those out to a file. That'll be the first assignment. Again, you can do this 
as one problem, and this is one problem, or you can combine them together, whichever is easiest for you. All right? The other one I'm going to ask you to do is number 17, which is the old, fun, rock, paper, scissors game. You can be as nuts with this as you want to be, or as simple with this as you want to be. The, you're you're going to play the computer. The computer will have a number generated for it, which is a 1 or a 2 or a 3. Or if you want to, 0, 1, or 2, however you want to set it up. In here, if it's a 1, it's rock. If it's a 2, it's paper. If it's a 3, it's scissors. And the computer will generate its thing right away. Don't show what the computer generated, because otherwise you win every time, right? I mean, if it comes up and it says it, it was rock, Okay, fine, I'll take scissors, or I'll take paper. You know, that, that, that doesn't make it much of a game. All right? So the rules and everything are right here. And that next assignment So this is what you've had so far. The initial payroll ones in the miles per gallon, all right. The BMI calculator, the one that was just due over the weekend, was the BMI with file output and the guessing game. This one will be due the Sunday that you begin your break. Please don't tell me oh, I worked on it all my break. No, don't do that. That's why I made it due then. All right, and again, it's 513 and 514, prime number and prime number part two, and 517, which is the rock paper, scissors program. So it's up to you. If you've had enough for a day and you want to take off, then leave. You're not hurting my feelings. But if you want to start working on that conversion program, all right, that's what we're going to work on next time. And it's not, you might look at it and go, it's really hard. I'm never going to get, it's not that hard. Before you write a line of code, think about what you want to do. For instance, you might want Maine to just show that menu. And it might call a routine to show that menu. And then based on the selection, you're either going to call show kilometers, or you're going to call show inches, or you're going to call show feet, or you're going to quit. That's the program. And the good news is this is, this is the kind of thing that your methods are going to look like. They're not going to be big methods. They're only going to have a few lines in them. All right, so take a look at that. Again, I've got the comments out here, out on the P drive already. It's out under homework, but it's out there with all the other comments. So that's what we're going to do from 10 to 11. And then at 11, after you've taken your break, I'm going to come in and, and quickly write it before your eyes, for lack of better words. Does all that make sense? Questions? I'm done.